Ooh. And there you go. Okay, so what, what, what was that for? Like, do people do this just so they can like look inside? And <laughs> no, Whoa. definitely not, definitely not. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now, a while ago, I built custom keyboards for myself right here and you saw it for yourself. They are great. But at this point in time, I kind of feel like I need a little upgrade to my PC at home. And as most of you would know, building custom PCs is a deep rabbit hole in itself. So for someone who's not <laughs> as tech savvy as the rest of all of you, uh, it can be a little intimidating. So I brought in help. And that is Kai Hong. All right, thanks for having me. <laughs> My name is Kai Hong. I'm a content creator that mainly dives into the PC side of things. So that's talking about laptops, desktops, accessories, you name it. If someone like me and anyone out there who is kind of really iffy about this process, what is the easiest way that we can get into this? Right, so when it comes to PC building, it's definitely a really vast world with mm. lots of opinions online and you might be taken a little bit aback by it and you don't really know what to do. But what if I told you there's a really simple way to get started into PC building and it's really simple. I like the sound of that, tell me. System integrators. So, for starters, what are system integrators? To keep it very simple, well, system integrators are basically either a person or a company that can take component subsystems together and put them all together to create one whole system and ensure that it works fine. I like the sound of that. That sounds really easy. It's like outsourcing what you want to have someone else figure it out for you. Yes, exactly. So. SIs are really getting popular nowadays and it really is the go-to way if you just want to get a really nice looking gaming PC without well, going through all that hassle and think about all the necessary things like whether it fits, whether it's going to look nice and all that. It's going to be all done for you. Simple as that. So today we are taking a look at quite a number of gaming PCs from popular SIs here in Singapore and we're going to take, let you have a look and see which you prefer and what you like about it. So first, we have this. This is the Ridge from DreamCorp. I like that it's super slim. It has this white body that has like mesh around it. Um, I can see this fitting in really nicely into any little nook and cranny and that's a good thing. What are the different things that are happening here? So essentially for this PC, the Ridge by DreamCorp, you're looking at a mini ITX system and this is where the motherboard is. This is your power supply and this is the graphics card. In terms of gaming PCs overall, the size of the PC is dependent on the size of the motherboard. Mm -hmm. So when you hear ITX PC, it definitely means that the case is compact and it supports the ITX form factor. What do you think, or rather, how much are you willing to pay for this, the Ridge by DreamCore? Um, I have no context of what prices are like, so I'm just going to think about what laptops cost. A pretty decent one will be 1008 maybe. 1008 Okay. Yeah, okay. 1008 So here we have our second system. This is also from DreamCore and it's called the Ghost. It's not as mesh as the other one, it's actually the opposite, which has this glass back on this side, so you're not really getting much airflow. And this side over here is completely solid. So how does that affect what's happening in here? Actually, you'll be surprised in terms of airflow, this is somewhat similar to the previous system that we took a look at. So because there's just a bigger case overall, there's just more volume, you don't really need all sides of it to be meshed. So as you can tell, the top is meshed, the front is, and that's all you really need. Oh. So the airflow just goes from the front, to the back and you're well covered. There is quite a lot of space compared to the previous system and this is because this is considered a mid-tower. So by mid-tower, it means that you can actually fit a bigger motherboard here. And in this case, this is a micro ATX motherboard. It is actually generally the most popular option for most people out there oh. because it basically is the fine balance between size and performance. So you're kind of getting the best out of both worlds. Here we are looking at a Core i5-13400F. You do also have 16 gigs of RAM and a very sizable power supply right down in the basement here. But you do get quite 
a large upgrade in terms of the graphics card. So this is actually a RTX 4070. So the more serious the gamer is, the more they're going to gravitate towards this one? Yes, we would say yes. Okay. If you're just all about performance, the graphics card is definitely the most important thing that you need to consider. How much do you think you're willing to pay for this? This looks more expensive than the previous one, so I'm going to yeah. go 2.5k? 2.5? 2.5? Okay. The next PC we have is the largest that we have right here, right now. <laughs> it is quite the <laughs> So for this specific build, we do have a 13th gen Core i7. Okay. Couple that with 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. So double the RAM. You also have an RTX 4070 and one terabyte gen 4 SSD. How do you determine, is there, is there a math to it, to how many fans you need to fit out versus what you're getting? In general, when you actually do take a look at PCs or if you want to try your hand at building one, you do want to at least take note of how many intake fans you have. Mm -hmm against how many exhaust fans you have. So for instance, in this PC, the s has opted to go with six intake fans, mm -hmm. three on the side, three on the bottom, and four exhausts, three on the top, and one on the back. And if you actually did notice, this is using a liquid cooler. Mm -hmm. So this is a 360 millimeter AIO. You can see that this is actually the radiator right here. So that's where all the heat is exhausted. So when you do have more intake fans, against lesser exhaust fans. That means you're getting more cool air into the PC and generally that keeps temperatures down. Wow, that, this is an art, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a fine balance and Needy. this is what all SIs have to do. They have to decide right from the get-go and see whether it's optimum in terms of the temperatures, the performance, and of course the price. So the last point I do have to ask you, how much would you be willing to pay for this PC? This is a Supreme from Invader. So. I'm going to gauge based on what you said earlier <laughs> that this usually is a more bang for buck one. Okay. So maybe 2.2? 2.2? 2.2? She guessed 2.2? All right. Okay, so now we are at our fourth system. This is a tiny ITX build from Mansa Computers. Take a look at it and see what you like about it. It blew me away because now suddenly we shrank back down? <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is a really compact PC. Compared to the previous PC with Invader, this actually performs equally as good. <laughs> okay, so that means it's more expensive. Oh, oh she might have gotten it. Okay. Who knows? Instead of going with a standard air cooler that you saw with the Dreamcore Ridge, mm. this from Mansa, they opted to go with a 240ml radiator instead. Mm. So, this is the way to go if you want to put powerful components into a compact build without sacrificing on the space. Here we have a 13th gen Core i5, same 32 gigs of RAM, a sizable power supply, and with the RTX 4070, as well as a one terabyte gen 4 SSD. We know how this one performs compared to the one we saw before, but yes. what about all the other ones before? With this system, as I mentioned, you can do basically 4K gaming at high or ultra settings, no issues at all, mm -hmm. 60 frames per second at least. That's for this PC from Mansa and the one from Invader. And we have taken a look at the one from Dreamcore, the Ridge. Well, that will be more value oriented, so you're looking at more of a 1080p gaming or 1440p gaming, mm. which isn't bad, honestly, because it really depends on the monitor they go with, but just know that it is not as powerful as compared to these systems. Mm. So how much are you willing to pay for this exact one? Definitely going to be more expensive, so I'm going to go with like 3.5? 3.5? 3.5? All right, all right. You hold on to that thought. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, now, this is the last system that we have here, and this isn't actually from an SI. This specifically is an Intel NUC 13 Raptor Canyon. So an Intel NUC is actually a standard by Intel where they do what we call bare bones kits. Mm. Basically, you can choose from many different options, but in general, what you get is a case, a custom motherboard, and that's it. The rest of the parts, you actually do have to choose yourself and install them yourself. 
This is even more compact than the one before. Like you, you kind of have, everything is kind of fit exactly where it needs yes, to be. Yes, exactly. So this is some of the advantages when it comes to a NUC. It's all customized to fit within a certain amount of space. If you do have spare graphics card or parts lying around, perhaps a NUC is a good way to go because you are saving on overall cost just by reusing, reusing your old parts. So for this system, I'm not going to ask you to actually guess the price. I'll just tell you outright how much this costs. So this has a Core i9, 32 gigs of RAM, a 1 terabyte Gen 4 SSD, as well as a 3080 Ti. This actually will set you back roughly $4,000 Sing dollars. Yes, it is pricey, <laughs> but again, technically when you actually choose an Intel NUC, it doesn't come with the GPU, it doesn't come with the RAM, it doesn't come with the storage, so that's all up to you. In this instance, with this particular configuration, it does cost $4,000, but if you go simpler and just choose something like a 3060, mm -hmm. half the RAM, half the SSD, you can bring the price down to just about $2,000 thereabouts. Alright, so Mel. Just now you took a look at all four of the systems, well, mm -hmm. including the NUC, but we'll just take a look at the ones from the SI here. And you gave a price. But before that, which one would you say is your favorite system? Given my needs, it would be this one. Okay. Because I'm looking at the aesthetic, so I'm definitely not going to go bigger and bigger. Okay, okay. And you said this, you said, if I remember correctly, 1.8K? Yeah. 1008? Okay, so this, the Ridge from Dreamcore, for this exact configuration, you're actually quite close. Oh. It's just under $2,000. Nice. So you are almost right on the money. I'm just gonna go on and let you know the prices yes, of please. these various PCs. So the next one that we took a look at, this also by Dreamcore, this is the Ghost. And this costs right about $2,000 as well. Nice. Right, so for this system, I believe you guessed 2.2, 2.2, 2 2.3 roughly. This will actually set you back just under $3,000. Okay. Yeah, so with the components that's chosen here and the whole build and the quality of the chassis and all that, yeah, you do pay a little bit more, but again, like I mentioned, this is also one of the best performing PCs of the bunch here. Yeah. And lastly, Last we have one. that. Yes. You guessed 3.5, Yeah. if I remember correctly. Would you be surprised if I said that that also cost just under $3,000? Ooh. Whoa! Yep. These two are like practically the same. Practically the same. Different bodies. But very different at the same time. Yeah. Well, not practically the same, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For any of these PCs right here, when you configure it on any of their websites, it does start from anywhere from 1003 to 1006. So essentially, you're still getting a really good PC that looks almost the same as the ones featured here, but for a much more affordable price. So you are able to enter even at 1.3. And then along the way, as you get more and more you know, passionate and you keep wanting to go upgrading, then you can just expand along the way. But you don't have to wait until you kind of have a ready-made, I want this 3K version. You can start at any time. Yes, that's the beauty of SIs mm -hmm. because they are technically just using off-the-shelf parts. Yeah. They have built a system for you. You can just start off simple. But along the way, as you gain more and you find that, you know, you want more performance, you want it to be better looking, perhaps, you can just swap the parts out and upgrade your system as you go along. Simple as that. That was so much to absorb, but really, Kai, you've done an amazing job breaking it down for us. So thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. My pleasure. I hope everyone has learned something today. I definitely did. So thank you so much for watching and joining us today. If you would like to learn more about building custom PCs or going down this road, check out Hardware Zone's website in the link below. Until then, like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.